Hello there and welcome back to Granny's Garden. Now this week I am going to show you how to prune your crepe myrtle or Lagerstroemia indiga. First of all there's the colours. It goes from deep purple to lilac and through to white. And then it's got the reddish, the reds, the fuchsias and the pinks. And then of course the size. There is a size for every single garden. From the little dwarf varieties that go from 3 to 5 feet to the semi-dwarf varieties that's about 8 to 10 feet. And then of course you've got the whoppers which are 20 to 40 feet. So there's room for one in every garden but you have to be careful which one you choose. And then of course it blooms. It has non-stop blooming for weeks and weeks and weeks from 90 to 120 days blooming. And then when it finally finishes in autumn blooming you get the leaves turning into that gorgeous autumn colour which is like an orangey yellow into the red. And then of course comes winter. When the leaves have finally fallen you're left with this beautiful trunk or trunks and that's when the multi-trunk comes into its own. Look at these glorious trunks. This is bark. The bark is constantly peeling off, not because it's sick, because it's meant to peel off. And it leaves this beautiful, silky, soft trunk behind. And just look at the multi-stem. It is so architectural. The structure is just fantastic. It doesn't even have a lot of issues with pests. It is susceptible, however, to powdery mildew. So now let's get on with pruning. My number one tip is don't prune at all. But this is a video about how to prune. So I'm going to give you some tips anyway. You always remove the suckers because this tree has a tendency to sucker quite badly. So you remove always the sucker and obviously your DDDs, your dead, diseased or damaged. But this tree has got some other issues, which we're going to discuss now. There are some shrubs, like the Fotinia red robin, or the Spirea bridal wreath, or the Mahonia, that don't mind whatsoever a reduction in height. They always bounce back. But the myrtle doesn't. The myrtle does not take kindly at all to any reduction in height. We said before there are many different varieties available. So if you have overhead power lines or you want to plant it close to a house, choose the correct variety. Do not choose a whopper or maybe even a semi whopper to plant in those places. Once you have decided on the correct variety and you've planted it, leave it alone height wise. Now an incorrect pruning results in the termination of the trunk or the trunks in a horrible, gnarly, ugly knuckle. And come spring, this knuckle sprouts a gazillion twigs or little tiny fine branches that are so weak they can't even support the weight of their own flowers. And there's so many of them, so congested, that no air can get in, no sun can get in, and what happens? You've got it. Powdery mildew. The crepe myrtle has got this glorious, open, graceful shape. And if you start lopping it or carrying out this yearly massacre that people like to do, you're going to wreck that shape and it is extremely difficult to recreate it and sometimes even impossible. Now, luckily for you, I have four different crepe myrtles here in this garden and they have perfect examples of some of the things that have been done correctly and a lot of the things that have been done incorrectly and the consequences of those actions. Now look at the architecture of these trunks, it's absolutely gorgeous. Whoever started to prune this tree in its infancy did it correctly. They chose the correct amount of trunks and wide enough to give it this vase-like appearance which is so typical and so desired in the multi-trunk myrtle. They also decided to skirt it up to leave these beautiful legs on show. Now normally you would choose somewhere between four to five foot or even higher and say right from that height downwards I'm going to remove every single lateral branch. They obviously forgot some. However, we're going to be rectifying that today. The problem came when they decided at some stage, I don't know who did it, but at some stage somebody decided that the tree was getting too big. Now, if I pull back the camera, you'll see what I mean. There was absolutely no reason to massacre this tree. There's no overhead power lines, no trees in the nearby vicinity, and far away from the house. So I just don't understand why they did it. But they caused a very serious problem. It is a mass of twigs and weak branches. Absolute mass. It's like a forest up there. I'm just getting up close to explain it to you. Look at this branch. Normally when you take off a branch you either cut back to a, a forking branch or you cut back to the trunk. It should have been taken right down to here. You'd have cut it off here and you'd have left the other one to grow up. But they just cut it, all of them as a matter of fact, I just cut at a certain level and at the very point that they've been cut, they're just sprouting a gazillion twigs. So I'm going to get the ladder out now and all my tools and we're going to start from the bottom up. 
we're going to start from the bottom up and normally be removing suckers but because I've planted this area now with bulbs I'm keeping this area fairly clean from suckers so there's actually none here to, to remove. In a different tree I'll show you that there are suckers. Next thing we're going to do is decide on where we want our break off point to be which would be about here and then start removing these ugly side branches and the little ones that are about to start as well and leave these trunks nice and clean. Now I'm going to go with the loppers. Just for newer gardeners, these are right and a wrong way to hold these loppers. These are bypass loppers, which means the actual cutting part bypasses when it closes the other side. Now this flat part should be placed against the trunk and that way you leave a, just a tiny little bit of colour between the trunk and the branch you've cut off. Hopefully you can see it here. The reason is that the tree needs this colour to be able to form this scar. You do not leave a stub, you just leave the colour that's flush against the tree. So you put the flat part against the tree and then the cutting part closes. This part protects the colour. Now I need to deal with two other areas. I need to remove this branch flush against the trunk and I also need to remove this branch which is far too low down and also is growing into the inside and is causing a bit of difficulty further up the tree. But in order to do that I'm going to need a saw. Now I've got my curved pruning saw out, I'm just going to put my glove on and we shall start. And now this one. Now let's have a look at a different type of problem. This trunk forks out into two. And again, it forks out into two. This one is absolutely fine, and this one is absolutely fine. They both contribute to the all over shape of the tree, and they're lovely. This one, however, has a branch that goes into the inner part of the tree, and it causes congestion. And this one is rubbing, both here and here. And if I separate them, you can actually see the damage that has been caused. So what I'm going to do is take off this branch right down here, and I kill two birds with one stone. I stop the rubbing, and I stop the congestion. Now we're getting up to the less obvious part. Let's have a look at this first. This is an absolute mess. Well, obviously we're going to take out all of these dead ones as well, all this twiggery. Even these branches, they're lopped off and that's caused a whole load of other twigs. So all I can do at this stage is try and choose where it's lopped off the best branches to continue and remove the other ones and then try and reduce the stub so that the branch that remains becomes a new sort of like continuation of the branch as opposed to a twig just branching out off of it. That's the general idea anyway. But this is a process going to take a lot of time, so I'll just film little snippets as I go ahead so you can see how the tree is beginning to clear out. Now there's a problem here, if I get in close. I've got a whole load of branches here all together. Now this one I've just topped off because it was rubbing here just to see what was going on behind it. But behind it, there's rubbing going on here. These branches are just about touching and they're already rubbing on each other. So what do I do? Well, if I follow this branch down and I take it off at this level, that means I'm going to get rid of the rubbing I'm going to get rid of the congestion here in the middle and leave that air circulate. So I just want to see now if I can get a good angle here with the saw without damaging anything else and see if I can decongest this part. What is important is that you take just a moment to think. Once a branch is taken off it can't be put back. So think of the all over structure of the tree. Now here I've got a branch in the background. You can see it here. This one here. 
that's doing absolutely nothing going into the center and is a quite a small one so I'm not interested in that. Problem here at the back, if you can see it, uh, this one goes quite up straight and this one goes absolutely nuts. It crosses over there, it's rubbing on the back of this and then it's going up. So definitely need to get uh, a saw in. But where do I take it down? Do I take it down here or do I take it down here? So have a look at the other side. What's this one doing? Well, it's not a very good branch. It gets very weak towards the, the top. So I think I'm actually going to take it down to here and then just leave this one in the center. Again, opening up that center. Then when you get over somewhere like here, this is an absolute mass. And as those branches get thicker, they're going to be rubbing into one another like crazy. So at the moment, I can see this one at the back going straight towards the other branch. Don't want that. I can see these two are vertically just a little, see a little tiny bit of air. You can see it there in between the two of them, but that's not going to last for long. After this growing season, they're going to be rubbing like crazy. So again, one of these two has got to go. And some twiggery around here, very small branches, not very interesting. So those are going to come as well. And then I want to get rid of some things like these, these stubs that were just cut willy nilly. And that obviously should have been taken right back to the base, not just left like that. I mean, what's that? Goodness sake. This is what happens when you don't take your cut back to either a large branch or the trunk. You just, they just cut it here and it's absolutely full of like little twig branches coming out and it's all twisted. So this needs to be taken right back here so you don't get this mushroom effect of twiggery. Now you see, I've got no more rubbing here. And if I can get the camera close up here, you can see here, this mark was already rubbing there. And all of this area, my goodness, the dog barking. And all of this area is a lot more decongested. Well, that was a nice clean cut despite the angle. Well, here's the traffic congestion. So first of all, I'm going to take off this one. I'm going to leave these nice strong stems, I'm going to remove these little twigs and then I'm going to see which other branches I'm going to take out. But first of all, this one's going and the little twigs are going. Now don't be afraid to adapt as you go along. I had originally taken out this branch here because it was crossing and I left this one because it was going into the tree but right up straight instead of crossing. However, the inside is still quite congested so I think removing this branch is going to be a positive. So I'm changing my mind and instead of leaving this one I'm going to take it down now to the base here and free up that even more. But as you can see this is now becoming a lot better than it was. Well at least the sun has come out. Right, now after careful consideration, I'm going to do something about this. This is forked into two. This one is a nice straight one. It goes right out through the top of the tree in the center. That's perfect. This one is leaning already towards those branches that are there. It's about a four to five inch gap. But within this year's growth, it's probably going to start rubbing on that one. And if I do take this down to here, then I'm going to decongest the whole of the center. And I think that'll be the last of the decongestion here in the center. And then I'm going to start on the twiggery. Again, another major decision here. Now, I've already taken a branch off here, as you can see. Sometimes you need to remove a branch and step back and be able to see what that does before going on to the more drastic solution. Now here, it's definitely going to be the more drastic solution. This one is growing up, but it comes out first and then it goes up. So it's an actual weak structure here. And then, of course, you've got this one, which is a very a quite thick branch. But again, it's heading towards the inside of the tree and it's already banging into this one here, further up. So, if I only take it down as far as here, it's going to start sprouting and it's going to send up more branches here into the center of the tree. And I don't want that. So I'm going to have to follow it down, follow it down, and I'm going to have to take it off right down. And as a matter of fact, if they had skirted this tree up, or if they had canopied it up in the beginning to this four or five foot height, removing all the side branches, this wouldn't have become a problem. Now it is a problem, so it needs to be removed. So I'm just going to cut down as far as I can, as close to the trunk as I can here, so I don't want any sprouting. And then that should be it. 
Okay, so now completely opened up into this vase shape. Okay, well that's this one done and it's looking a whole lot better. A lot of air circulation there. Every time it gets up to a fork I've just left one, so it's a continuation. Right at the very, very, very top, uh, there's still some twigs there I just couldn't reach. <laughs> I'm not that tall, I'm only five foot four, and even on top of that ladder, well, there's no way I get up to about there and that's it. As soon as it starts leafing out in spring now, in a few weeks time, it's going to be absolutely lovely. Because at the moment it looks a bit, oh my God, I've just been cut. But in a few weeks time, it's going to leaf out and it's going to look gorgeous. And I'm going to show you very quickly how you train a myrtle bush to become a multi-trunk. Here we have another crepe myrtle. Again, it has been lopped and again, it formed a lot of twigs up here. This is a lot younger, this tree. And we'll just see if I can fix it. Now, if I get up close, there's a lot of these triple branches caused by this lopping here. So I'm going to have to get in like and take one half off, just leave one branch going up. Try and fix that, obviously not going to have a triple. Down here, I probably have to take off the whole of this branch here, just leaving that centre one. At some stage, if I get down here, Part of the tree died, quite a sizable proportion of the tree died, and they just obviously cut it off and left it there. I'm going to have to take that up, it looks really quite ugly. Now, as you see, this tree has got suckers. It had loads and loads and loads of suckers. So what I've done is left the suckers that are in a fan shape and are growing in the right direction, and I'm going to let them over the next growing season get wider, have the branches they need to have, and get taller. And then I'm going to start limbing up and skirting up when it gets to about this height. And I want to create the same type of multi-trunk as you've seen in the first grape myrtle, which is so attractive. Well, hopefully with this video, you will have learned how to take care of your crepe myrtle, how to prune it and how to try and rectify damage that has been done by lopping. During this growing season, we're going to be following it to see how it shapes and how it leaves out. And I'm also going to be on top of possible powdery mildew. You need to get on top of it immediately and it's and it's even better to use preventative measures. So the very second I see those first leaves, I'm going to crack on with the neem oil. Now either use the ready-made neem oil or the one that you mix with water. But do remember that oil and water don't mix. So if you do put them together, you're going to need a little tiny drop of detergent to make it all mix together well. Now, apart from that project, we've got this project behind us, which is the creation of a multi-trunk myrtle. So please subscribe and follow me on the channel. And we're going to see how this myrtle flares into hopefully the beginning of a multi-trunk myrtle. It might be a little bit tiny and whimsy and flimsy at the beginning but by the end of this growing season you should be able to see a shape taking place. So for the moment I'm going to sign off and I'll see you all next Friday here in Granny's garden. Bye bye now. Let's just hop down the garden have a look see what's good in the garden this week. This week it's the forsythia. It's there in all its glory. And I hate people who cut forsythia straight across, especially with hedge clippers. I like to leave it in its natural form. I do cut it down quite severely after it's finished flowering, but it loves it. Look at the length of them. Look at that up there, dancing in the breeze. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see it right from the house and it's the very, very end of the garden. Bye again. See you next week.